Hey there, today I'm going to talk about specialty nibs and this is a topic that will be I think of interest mainly to those who are not yet very familiar with fountain pens. And this can be confusing. Those of you who have used fountain pens for a number of years will not find anything new in here, I think. So I hope this will be useful, especially to those of you who are interested but who may be confused by terms like italic or oblique nibs, etc. Okay, now first of all, there is an excellent website, www.richardspens.com and uh, the, the person who operates that site has some reference documents. You can just, uh, just online HTML pages. And a couple of those are devoted to this topic, to, to nibs, the basics and more advanced stuff. Check that out. If you're interested, check it out. These documents give a lot more information than I can in a video, and it's very well written and really, really informative. So today I'll just give you the absolute basics and nothing more and that will give you a writing sample. Okay, let's start by saying that when most people think of a fountain pen nib, they will think of something like this. And the most important thing to note here is that the nib is made of a specific material, in this case it is stainless steel, which is then plated with gold, that's not always done, but with this pen as you can see, it is gold plated, and then, most important of all, I'll put this against a dark background. You see that at the very end of the nib is a sort of ball-like thing. Well, these ball-like things at the end of the tines are usually iridium, a very hard metal. Gold is too soft. If you would scrape that across the paper when writing, it will wear down very quickly. So you have these iridium balls, and usually they are just that, balls, welded to the end of the tines, the two tines that constitute the nib. These round balls are very useful because it doesn't really matter how you angle the pen on the paper, it will always write. But there are some nib types out there that do not have these standard balls. They are shaped differently. Okay, so the most important types I think, and those are the types I'd like to discuss today, are italics or stubs, obliques, and a calligraphy nib. Now, italics and stubs are not exactly the same, and Richard Beiner really explains that very well in the pages I've just referred you to, but today I'm just going to consider these nibs as the same type of nib, which they, they are roughly the same, so I think I'm, I'm justified in doing that. What I want you to understand about that nib is that whereas the regular nib is rounded off, these two little balls of iridium, well, they are somewhat there in the stub or in the italic nib, but they're flat. So they're not round, they're flat, which you may be able to see on this nib. I'll show you the writing later, but as you may be able to see, it's just cut off completely straight. So it's not rounded, it's just cut off. What that does you can probably, I mean, try to picture that. That means that it's very broad, right? It's not rounded off, it's just broad. Which means that if you go down, you get a very broad line. But if you would move like this, horizontally, then you get much finer lines, right? Because of the shape of the nib. Well, that is what we call an italic nib. Then there is another type of nib, which is a bit like that, but somewhat different. And that is an oblique nib. Now an oblique nib is not rounded off either, just like the italic, but it is cut off at a slanted angle. So here I have a vintage Mont Blanc. I'm not sure how well you can see it because it is all pretty small of course, but this nib is an oblique because it is cut off like this at a slanted angle. So you have the rounded nib this is a very bad um, symbol to, to show that, but you have the rounded nib, you have the stub nib, and then you have an oblique, or an oblique like that. It depends a little bit on the type of oblique, whether it's a left oblique or right oblique. Forget about that. Again, the pages I referred you to detail all of that. For now, just understand what this is. So here we have a, a, a nib that is cut off like that, 
And again, that will give you some line variation. Just like an italic will give you more line variation than a regular rounded nib. And with this oblique nib, you can understand what's going on. If I write like that, I will get a very broad line, right? But if I move like this, then I will get, again, a very fine line. If this sounds very confusing, don't worry. I'll show you a writing sample in a few minutes, and then everything will be clear. Okay, the final nib type I'd like to discuss today is a calligraphy nib, which I have here. As you can see, this is very broad, and you can also see it is cut off completely straight. So this is actually a type of italic. However, one big difference is that this nib doesn't have those balls of iridium welded to it. You see that? It's completely flat. And the good thing about that is that it allows for very sharp angles. I'll show you that too. And when you're doing calligraphy, you really want that. You want to be able to make very sharp lines that really end in a nice sharp tip and not sort of a, a half rounded tip. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so we have the regular fountain pen nibs which are rounded, we have the stubs or the italics which are cut off straight, and then we have the obliques which are cut at a slanted angle. And then we have a, let's say it is a specific type of the italic, the calligraphy nib, which is usually just flat. That's all there's to it. So it's not that confusing. It's just different shapes of nib. Okay, now, two further types of nib I'd like to show you. First of all is a music nib, which is, again, an italic. It is cut off straight. Now, this one has two breather holes and two slits, which you probably cannot see very well. doesn't really matter. I have a review on this pen, too. Platinum music pen. A music nib is, again, a specific type of italic nib, and this was designed so that you can write music with it, like musical notes. So, usually what you should do with a pen like this is hold it at a pretty steep angle, something like that. Not the way you would usually write, but really a steep angle. And then, because of the unique shape of this nib, when you move down, you make very narrow, fine lines, which you use for the musical notes. But when you move horizontally, you get much broader lines, like to make these little flags on the notes, which probably have a name, but I'm not a musician, so I don't know. Um, so that's, that's what this pen was, was made to do. And finally, we have a flex nib. I'm not going to show you a writing sample with this, uh, because I have an extensive review on the Noodler's Flex Pens and on the Noodler's Ahab. So if you're interested, check out those reviews. Uh, I, I'm already taking up way too much of your time, so um, there you go. A flex nib is meant to flex. It's that simple. So this is a rounded nib. As you can see, it's much more like a regular traditional fountain pen nib. But it's made in such a way that under pressure it will open up. And that means that you get line variation. So if you apply no pressure, you get a nice fine line. But if you push down on it, the two tines of the nib open up and you get a much wider, broader line. And that is very nice for specific types of writing. Okay, so this was an extremely brief explanation. Again, more information. I really recommend richardspens.com. There's some really nice reference pages there. For now, this is it. I hope this was useful, I hope this was somewhat comprehensible, I hope maybe this has cleared up some issues, and that's it. So I'll see you later, and now we'll move on to the writing sample. Bye bye! Okay, specialty nibs. Let's start with an italic. So this is an italic nib, this actually is an italic medium, which has nothing to do with the amount of italicism or whatever you like to call that. It's just that the, the width of the nib is medium, right? <clears throat> so, what you would get with a nib like this is some very nice line variation. If I move the nib like this, I get some very fine lines, and if I move it like this, I get some much broader lines. Of course, I have starter problems now. I don't want to show you that, but... So here you see the 
the line variation. Now this line variation of finer and wider lines also shows up in your writing. So this nib is, is also slightly flexible but this is what an italic nib would do so it gives you variation in the lines going from thinner to a lot thicker depending on how you angle the nib and that effect may be more or less pronounced depending on that angle again so there we have an italic we could also have a look at something like this which is another type of italic or uh, what you like to call that uh, actually it's a specific type of stub I think officially and uh, this is a music nib which has two slits and two breather holes in this case um, the music nib was actually developed to uh, write musical notes with. So I'll, I'll put this down as a different type of italic. I'll just call it music nib because that's what it is. And if you hold this type of nib in the right way, which is angled fairly steeply, uh, and turn in, so rotate the nib a little bit towards the paper, then you should be able to write note, notes with it fairly easily, which I cannot do because I'm not a musician, um, but you should be able to get some thinner lines, wider lines, and of course your little things at the end of the notes, which probably has a name which I don't know. Uh, so, so that's what this pen was meant for. Now I'm going to use it as a regular fountain pen, so I'll just hold it as a regular fountain pen. And then you see, again, the same thing I've just showed you there, you get some line variation. So if you write with this in a normal way, then again you get some very nice line variation, which you would also get with a flex pen or a flex nib. I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Right. I don't have a narcissistic personality disorder. It's not that I'm writing my name just because I like it that much, but I happen to write it quite a bit, so it's, it's easy for me to write. This is an oblique nib, which means that if, if you look at it like this, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but what I can see is that it is cut at a slanted angle. So the nib actually goes somewhat like that instead of being straight like an italic instead of being round like a regular fountain pen nib this one is cut off at a slanted angle which makes for again some interesting writing now the, the thing is you have to rotate the pen a bit towards the paper like that so you have to figure out how to hold the pen so that it writes and that we call an oblique and this is a broad nib but it is on a, a vintage pen and nibs tended to be a bit uh, finer back in the day so just so you know okay now again with this pen you get this interesting line variation again where the diagonal lines like this are narrower than the diagonal lines like that and that will of course show up in your writing again Although I always feel it's a bit less pronounced than in the italics. But it's different. And actually this is an interesting way to write. Uh, it takes a bit of getting used to. Because as I said, you have to rotate the, the nib so that it aligns well with the paper. Once you manage to do it, it's, it's fairly interesting. Uh, here I have another oblique broad. This is again on a, a vintage Mont Blanc pen. still have to get used to this pen. With this one, it's a bit more difficult to align the nib well. Okay, I, I have it now. This is an oblique broad again. So, and once more you see the 
difference in line variation which is very pronounced here. This one tends to be a little sharper than the one I've just shown you. So the sharper it's cut, there and there, the sharper it's cut, the, the bigger the line variation, I think. That is what my experience seems to suggest. Okay. Finally, I have the calligraphy nib, which is a bit like an italic, like a stub. But this one is entirely flat, so my camera probably won't pick that up. But if you take a look at the underside of this regular italic nib, you'll see it's a bit thicker. Really, that there is some stuff in there. Usually, this is probably iridium, a very hard metal. Usually that is rounded off, and then you get a little ball. And that is very pleasant because that means no matter how you you exact, no matter how you align it, it will write. Well, with an italic, that's a bit different because it is, you know, straight. But there is still some iridium there. Now, with a calligraphy nib, often it's just flat. There is no ball of iridium at all, whether it's flat or rounded off. It's just not there. It's just like a, a bit of sheet metal. Okay, now I'll show you how that writes. I'm not. I haven't got this one inked up, so I'll just dip it in a bottle of ink to give you a quick idea. I already have done a review of this pen. This is the Brunzel calligraphy pen. Uh, so there's an extensive review of all the different nib uh, types that came with it somewhere on my channel. So the good thing about this type of nib is that it allows for very sharp angling. You see that? These very thin lines and you got the wider lines. This is just quink blue ink, nothing fancy. And this nib is of course called a calligraphy nib for a reason. It was made for calligraphy. And I'm just doing some plain gothic stuff here. But as you can see, that's what it was meant to be used for. So if you're going to write your everyday stuff with this, then, um, like this, uh, that's going to be weird. It's just going to be weird, no matter what, what you do. This is a 4B nib, so that's broad, 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 really, really, really broad. Um, I can't imagine you writing a grocery list like with this going like I need some carrots and I need a, a tank to invade some country or whatever type of groceries you do I'm not sure but I mean it's it's not meant for this right but it allows for this really nice sharp stuff which is very difficult with a regular fountain pen Here's just a Caveco Sport. No line variation, as with this flat stuff. Uh, and, and even the, the sharp angles are, are just not as sharp. So, just so you know, here we go. A bunch of specialty nibs. I will upload a still shot of the different nib types at the end of the video. And um, that's it. So, I hope this was useful. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.